The views and opinions of the guest do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. All right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Zach Wild from Black Little Society. We're all doing the hang, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father. As always, I bring you guys awesome interviews and today it is the year in review for 2018, and I have my two awesome guys who always helps me out when I'm in a quick bind or just anything, Josh Crum and Kevin Akers, my on-site interview guys. And What's going on, John? Same old, guys. Not much. Love everybody. Glad to have you on here, guys, as always. Thank you all for everything that you have done for Bod's Mayhem Hour in the past year and uh, back in the day as well, so thanks, guys. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thank you, man. Listen, it, it it's it's like I've told you guys when I first started this. It, it's it's for all of you guys and it's a definite communal effort, right? That's it's, you exactly. know we all help each other, and with that it, it grows for all of us. You know that's exactly right. So I want to give a quick moment of silence for everybody that we've lost this past year, and they've been some shocking people that's passed away in the music community, and especially. For me, Jason Trioxin from Mr. Monster, Blitz Kid, The Brick Bats, and plus he's been with many more horror punk bands, stuff like that. Plus he's played with Michael Graves and The Misfits. So I want to give a quick moment of silence for these guys, but uh, we have truly lost a lot of great, great musicians. And I'm telling you right now, folks, me and Josh has talked about this, plus me and Kevin's also, all of us have talked about this. Get out if you can, when you can, to see these folks, because tomorrow's not guaranteed. The next 10 minutes is not guaranteed. Yeah, so, it can be the last time every time. Exactly right. So we'll give a quick moment of silence, and then we'll dive right into this. So here we go, guys. Condolences to their families and all the uh, music families that are out there. Let's dive right into this. I want to talk to Josh a little bit first before we get Kevin on here. Man, downtrend. What What's going on with downtrend? I know Mike's back in the band, and are you guys working on anything right now, possibly? Yeah, man. Actually, it's, you know, Downtrend, we have turned a corner that we collectively decided on as a unit. We, you know, we really don't play as much out these days. We've, we've made that decision. The market's getting so hard anymore to find quality shows, and it's not that we think we're too good. But the area of the country we live in, you know, we have to travel anywhere we play. And we've decided to cut back on the shows. We've scaled back. We played five or six a year. But we're focusing a lot more on writing and recording. We actually do plan on going into the studio in the spring and recording two new singles. Uh, we just released back for more about two months ago. And our long-term plan is we're going to release these two new singles, and then we're going to do two more and release the five together as an EP and do physical copies of those. They kind of stand modern in the approach, but also it gives us a chance to, to be creative, but without you know losing our, our butts one across the the country to play shows where we really can't make any money and the, and the shows we are playing are more high quality better shows we're, we're just being a little more picky about it we're you know we're all getting a little older and got families and it, it's harder to go play a hole in the wall you know six hours from home when you know some a reason you should be at home you know so yeah that's that's the future for us we're excited about it you know mike is back mike's home I feel more at home with him. I think the whole band does you know, he plays a harmonica so well it gives us a, a real different identity than a lot of bands I think and, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, we've got a new song written called The Battle Lost that I'm so excited about. We're actually so excited about it that we're not going to play it live until we record it. We want the album released to come out first. So uh, we've never done that. Usually we'll play them live and work the kinks out, but we're just really excited about this one. We've got a real Alice in Chains register feel to it. So and we I'm, really dig it. And I'm very proud of you guys. I've said this many times. What you guys are doing as far as show wise? I mean, you picked up a Doyle show, and now you're getting replayed with the Iron Maidens. That's pretty damn impressive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Iron Iron Maidens is in Louisville at the Mercury Ballroom. I think our buddy Kevin here's going to be a fat. 
Yep, I'll be That's there. a Ticketmaster Live Nation event. So any of those shows are always awesome because they're, they're high quality. You know, so yeah, we're looking forward to it. Got some more down the down the line coming up too that we can't really discuss yet. So. Oh yeah, and Devil Driver too. Ginger, I forgot those bands. <laughs> Yeah, well, we already yeah we did that back in October, of course, yeah. and then Doyle. Yeah, we've had so you know we're we're holding it for shows like that, shows where we're playing with people or, or opening up for, for for better crowds or something. But yeah, it's just you know the, the local music scene's gotten real tough, man. I encourage everyone to listen. If you can get out, if you got a band or a buddy that plays or a band that you're into, if you can get out and support them, because it is getting harder and harder with each passing day for these shows to be reality because there's just there's just no money in it anymore. There's no there's no venues even in it. You know, they'd rather have a DJ. And DJs will make five hundred bucks a night and the band will make sixty. It's crazy. That makes no but sense it's whatsoever. Reality. Yeah. Kevo, so. what's going on in your world, man? Not much. Same old stuff. <laughs> uh so let's jump right into the I don't know how, how many guys you have for your top 10, top 5, top 50. I don't know how many you guys have. But, uh, Kev, you want to start out? Who do you have? Top 10, top 5, whatever? Yeah, I usually do a top 5. I think 5 is a little more prestigious than having 10 albums. So my number 5 album of the year was So Fly Ritual. I thought that uh, of all the heavy bands that released albums this year, I thought that one was the best. It's just old school, So Fly. And it, was, it was just awesome. <laughs> my, my number four album of the year is Zeal and Ardor, Stranger Fruits. And I know that may not be an album that a lot of people have listened to because they're, you know, they're kind of a new band. But uh, that's probably the most unique album that came out last year. It's kind of a mix between black metal and southern blues with a little African tribal music mixed in with it. And it's, it's a unique sound and it's a really great album. They're on the spring festival circuit uh coming up this year so hopefully if anybody goes to these festivals check them out because they're they're really awesome my number three album is seven dust all i see is war and it's just classic seven dust i mean probably their best album since alpha i'm I'm a big fan of alpha and i think this is their best album since then i mean it's, it's got all the classic seven dust trademarks and I think Dirty is one of the best songs of the year overall. It's, it's just a, a, a headbanger, just a great song. For me, it's hard for me to see Seven Dust not being presented or being promoted as a headlining band. They could easily headline a festival. That's how much faith and confidence I have in that band over the years. And, and they well, put on a lot of show that, that, you know, just is better than anybody. I mean, you know, a lot of bands sound different than they do on their albums, but Seven Dust sounds exactly like they do on the album. They bring 100% energy to, the, to their stage performances, and they're incredible to see live. So I agree with you. They could headline anything. Yeah. yeah. I'm a well-known Seven Dust fan from way back in 1997. And they're a complete machine live. They always have been. And the reason they are is because they work their asses off. They're out there constantly. They're always on the road. Uh, They record albums in like a one-month cycle. They don't take forever in the studio. They pound them out to get back on the road. And, you know, right now they're doing a cool thing in Atlanta where they're doing three nights at the Masquerade where they do deep cuts the first night. Second night is called Deeper Cuts, and then the third night is just the Everyday Seven Dust show for the, for New Year's Eve. But I think that's kind of cool playing some songs for the fans that are older, maybe not played live as often. Uh, yeah. Really cool idea. And just like Josh said, Josh has seen Seven Dust many times. I know Kevin's seen Seven no. Dust many times. I've seen him a couple times. And Kevin, I cannot agree with you more, my brother, because you're exactly right. When you go see a Seven Dust show, what you hear on that album is what you hear when they play live. There's no cuts or any shady marks or anything like that. These guys fucking deliver every damn show on album. Yeah, absolutely. And they care. Absolutely right. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, 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 they care. They're, they're, they're a band that I've always felt very sincere about. And, you know, I saw them twice this year. But the first time was in Jacksonville, Florida, at the festival down there. Welcome to Rockville. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you mentioned they should headline or could headline shows like this. Yeah. Like this. Seven Dust played at 3 o'clock. It was on the main stage. I shit you not. They had a massive crowd over there. I was so proud for them. Like, I almost feel like I, I, I do, I'm not kind of lying to my form. Uh, I do kind of know them a little. I've played with them before down trend, and I've, I've seen them live so many times. I've met them so many times that they do recognize my face and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm sorry, as a name drop situation, didn't do that. <laughs> but I'm, like, I was happy for them, though, to see such a big crowd on a national stage. A national stage, but everyone made their way over to Seven Dust. There's three stages going, but everyone was at Seven Dust at three o'clock. Normally, three o'clock slot, Kevin, you know, it's scattered. Oh, 
all over all over the place. People still in the parking lot, drinking and partying, but it's yeah. good yeah. to see that uh, that people went in to see them. That really is great here. So. They did, and Dirty had just dropped, and it was it was the hot single, and it's you know. Okay, my number two album of the year is Judas Priest Firepower, hmm. and it is absolutely amazing that a band that has been around for over forty years. They've released two albums this decade, and both of them may be the best albums they've ever put out. I mean, Halford doesn't sound like he used to. He can't hit the notes like he used to. But I'm telling you, this new album is an absolute headbanger, and they absolutely destroy on this album. That, that shows you right there the test of time that that band has been around, and for Halford to revamp his, his vocal style, that tells you what a great musician that, that, that he is and the whole band is. Absolutely. My number one album is an absolute masterpiece, and it's I think it's going to be a strong contender for album of the decade, and that's Ghost Prequel. Oh, nice. I mean, it's all, it, it's almost a perfect album, start to finish, and there absolutely was not a better album released this year. Okay, so I want your opinion on the Ghost albums, because I'm a huge Ghost fan. Josh knows this. Everybody knows this. Malaria to this one. Do you... I think Malaria to me, or I hope I'm saying that right. Probably ain't, but who knows, but... That album is more darker than this album, don't you think, Kevin? I think that album has a couple more. Of, I think their best songs are on that album, but mm-hmm. I think there's, you know, that album has a lot of filler in it. There's absolutely no filler in this in prequel. I mean, it's every song on it. It's awesome. There, you know, it's, there's no. I mean, there's a. I guess Dance Markerberry is probably the standout hit on the new album. Yeah, for sure. But for sure. But, uh, you know, and I like Square Hammer on the other album. It's really good. That's probably my favorite song they do overall. But the, the new album is perfect from start to finish. Yeah, I've, I've got it. And they just keep impressing me. <laughs> Sorry, folks. It's just my opinion. I think they're a damn good band. And I know there's a lot of haters out there saying, oh, they're not metal, blah, blah, blah. Well, things have changed these days, sadly. But I think they fit right in just as well. Mr. Crumb. I enjoyed you- it. I'm I'm not a diehard Ghost guy. I love the image yeah. of Ghost. I like some of their songs here and there. Prequel's my favorite Ghost album. One thing that Prequel did is very, I don't want to say it's genius, but it's just simple. You know, we live in an era where people think an album has to be 13 tracks, an hour and 10 minutes long. Ghost kind of said bullshit to that. If you got the instrumental track, what, five songs with lyrics on Prequel? Yeah, I think there's nine songs total three instrumental tracks so yeah i think there's six songs so there's six with with lyrics. Lyrics, yeah. I, I would rather have a 40 minute album than an hour and 10 minute album almost any time yeah. let's talk the name on it this is for me well in the age of, of smartphones you know people's attention spans are shorter now so you know a, a 40 minute album with no filler is a lot better than an hour and 20 minute album with songs that you actually can't stand 100 percent. and you know it goes back to even the 70s when albums were shorter that's why they were classic records you know in the in the 70s and 80s we knew every song every album they were all classic that's because there wasn't so damn many that you couldn't keep up with them true you know, i think john i think we talked about that before on the show yeah yeah you know. Yeah, everything back then was short, sweet, done, and over with. They they wouldn't, God, overfill it and just keep pounding it out. I mean, short, sweet, done, over with, that's all take, you need. You could take time to get to know it because it wasn't so much to get to know. It was there you seven, go. seven, eight songs, you got to know them and right. love them. And I like to, and this is so, so easy, folks, easy to do, and I, I'm so glad that Ghosts are doing this. They're bringing back the instrumental in an album. I think that's awesome. There is a saxophone solo in the middle of one of those instrumentals that is just amazing, and you will never, ever hear any other metal band do that. Yeah. It's just something they do. Yeah. It's great. Metallica used to do it, like, you know, the instrumentals, and they got away from it. I think that's what's missing on their albums, and I'll just go ahead and say it now. If Cliff Burton was still around, they would still be doing fucking instrumentals. That's just my opinion. I agree. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I like history. And I like metal bands that aren't afraid to step out. I mean, another yeah. band that people give a hard time, they're burned out on them, or they're too pop, is Avenged Sevenfold. But, you know, a decade ago, when they put out Dear God, and you could hear the banjo. I was like, yeah. man, good for them. They're not afraid to put the banjo on this song. Mm-hmm. It sounds awesome, you know? Okay, I'm going to do mine. Mine's 27, but but I have to go expand because of the show and everything. So I'm just going to do mine. Oh, yeah, go, go ahead. Go right through them, be done. Yeah, 20, and... 27 albums? Yes. Oh, holy moly, okay. I'm three, <laughs> so okay, good. <laughs> All right, so number 27, Silence in the Stars, local band, their EP called Believe. 
That is a very, very damn good album. I'm going to do albums and plus EPs, so I'm all over the place with this. Number 26, Browsing Collection. EP Don't Want to Dance. These ladies know how to fucking rock, and they are from Sweden, over from Scandinavia. Check them out if you get a chance. Band called ODD EP, The Disorder. Really great southern metal. Just fantastic, fantastic of an EP. Coming in at 24 is All Hell the Yeti, Highway Crosses. Really good album as well. Number 23, Henry Derrick Ellis, The Devil Is My Friend. You need to check that out too, guys. That's an awesome album. 22, Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons. Uh, new album, The Age of Absurdity. That's a good one. Number 21, Audio Topsy, The Real Now. Number 20, Screaming Beast. It's called New Narrative of Hate. Number 19, Like a Storm, Catacombs. Number 18, Frequency Drift, Letters to Marrow. Number 17, Co-op. That's a self-titled. That's by Dash Cooper. Also number 16, Ministry with America Can't Can't Can't. That's uh, their new one. Number 15, Devil Driver Outlaws Till the End, Volume 1. I think that's a really good album that they took country songs and turned them into their own, or well, did their own little twist with it. And that's another thing. I, I hate when people give other bands shit for, like Josh said, you know, going out of their box, doing something different. I think that's cool what Devil Driver did with those country songs and turned them into some really heavy stuff. And Josh got to see them, and plus Kevin got to see them live. What did you guys think of that uh, of that album, plus seeing those live songs? I like the album. It's not, it's not, of course, I don't put cover albums and EPs on my top five. I kind of disqualify those, but I did like Outlaws to the End. It's unique. I'm a huge Outlaw country fan. So to get to hear Devil Driver do covers of Merle Haggard and George Jones, I mean, those were some of my favorites, and I enjoyed it. Uh, I think my favorite song on it was Ghost Riders in the Sky. Mm, I think their yeah. version of that was incredible. Pretty much ditto. <laughs> For Devil Driver, I prefer their. their you know, their written studio stuff. I thought the last record, I can't remember the name of it, had the sheep, had the, the wolf in, on the cover. Trust, the, uh, the trust the album. No One, I think is what uh, it's called. I really preferred it. But, um, but yeah, it was fun. And like you said, songs that you kind of grew up with in the South anyway, that you know, you've heard forever, hearing a different spin on them. But. All right, so number 14 coming in is Blackstone Cherry with their new album, Family Tree, that came out early, early this year. Number 13, now these guys, I, I love these guys to death. I'm really good friends with them. TB and the boys from Blitz Kid, what he's, get, what he's turned into now, his musical style. Again, a guy who is not scared to step outside that box and, and be metal rock. He loves this stuff, stoner stuff. A gathering of none, one last grasp at hope. I'm, I'm pleading with everybody, check this band out. I think everybody will like them if you give them a chance. That's just my, my opinion. Number 12, Cataclysm, Meditations. Number 11, Parkway Drive, Reverence. Number 10, Philip H. and someone in Illegals, Choosing Mental Illness as a Virtue. And number 9, Black Label Society, Grimmest Hits. Uh, what what do you guys think about this one? I kind of thought this was kind of so-so from the guys. What, what do y'all think? Yeah, I, I thought okay. it, was, it was a decent album. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed a few of the songs. Zach has a thing with me, and God knows I'm a massive Zach fan. <laughs> I wish he would put a little more thought into it sometimes. I feel like he pumps them out so quick that he doesn't put a lot of thought. He just wants to shred and doesn't really put you know a lot of melody into his playing anymore. I, I kind of miss that. But that said, it did have a couple. Gosh, I'm having a total brain fart now. There was a, a kind of a ballad. He sounded like Angel by Jimi Hendrix. Loved that song. You remember, you remember the name of it? Actually, yeah. And there was Trampled Down Below. I really like that song. Oh, Heaven, Heaven Had Gone Away. That's yeah. the name okay. of it. Love that song. Trampled Down Below. Love that. Well, I don't know. I had a couple. I thought it was top heavy. I thought I had about three or four really good, and the rest of them were kind of eh. Yeah, I agree. Number eight, of course, um, I'm along with the, uh, Kevin on this, Soulfly Ritual. Damn good album. Really good album. Kind of back to the roots, don't you think, Kevin? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was really good. Number seven, Pig Destroyer, Head Cage. If you like heavy, heavy stuff, that's that's, that's pretty damn good, too. Uh, number six, um, with Josh and uh, Kevin on this, Judas Priest with Firepower. That's, there's not a bad song on that from, out, from the start of that album to the end of that album. You get what you paid for. Do you guys agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Here's, here's one that really caught me off guard. This is from Sin Quirin. He's the guitarist of Ministry. It's it's a three track EP again. I mean, everybody don't like putting EPs, but I I mean, I just want to give respect out to these guys. This impressed me so well. This is my number top five. It's Three Headed Snake. It's his side band, and and it's a self titled album. 
Johnny, the lead singer, Johnny Ray, his vocals, I, I mean, it's it, they're powerful. Uh, check out this EP, the three songs. This is a throwback to like early 90s, late 80s, heavy stuff, but but it's just all so fucking meshed together so well. It's, it's just really good. Number four, Seven Dust, All I See Is War. That, that band right there is just a totally, totally machine, and uh, get out and check those guys out. Number three, Miles Kennedy, You're the Tiger. I think a lot of people still see him just as Miles Kennedy of Alter Bridge and Miles Kennedy of Slash. But this guy can hold his own just with himself. He can play guitar like nobody's business. He is a great, great musician and a great uh, writer as well. So have you guys got a chance to listen to any of this at all from Miles Kennedy? I haven't heard that album yet. It's good. <laughs> and in number two, I got Slash Living the Dream. That's a very excellent, excellent album. And I, I'm right there with Kevin. Uh, number one for me is Ghost Prequel. I, I think that that album is, um, whew, that's hard to beat, man. That that album, again, just like Judas Priest from start to finish. Tobias and what they're doing, they've got the image like Josh said. It's pretty fucking awesome. Their songs are great. There's really no fillers. It's just coming at you. If you like it, oh, well, if you don't, you know, don't. But it's it, it, to me, it's great. Yeah, it's almost like Rick Flair, right? If you don't like it, learn to love it. It's yeah. the best thing. Going. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to be around for a while, so people better get used to it. I think so. Yeah. I want to run through my top four horror punk bands, if you guys don't care, right quick. So, Sure. No, number four, Trash Bats, all their EPs. I mean, just everything they put out is just fucking funny and, and just great, great music from those guys. Robbie Bloodshed, his EP, Red Ice, White Book, Black Book, really good from Robbie. That boy has been non-stop ever since i got introduced to his music and uh he's he's not gave up and i give him a thousand thousand percent credit because like josh has always said you've got to put yourself out there you've got to keep promoting you've got to keep busting your ass and robbie has done that so far ever since he's been god dude 12 or 13 year old josh he's been doing that wow yeah yeah the dude is awesome as a musician argyle goolsby hollow bodies and then my number one, the Mighty Casket Creatures out of Atlanta, Return to Wolfton. Those guys are badass and love those guys a lot. They give me a lot of support. So. All right. I don't really have mine in an order, but I'm going to mention some albums that I really enjoy. My favorite album of the year, I will say, we've already discussed it, so we don't need to say too much about it. It's probably Firepower by Judas Priest. You take a band who should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame already, who had such a storied career, and at this point, right, what I think is their best record. I like it better than British Steel from top to finish, personally. Wow. And I think that's amazing. I mean, and like you said, uh, Rob's reinvented his voice. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. I think Richie Faulkner on guitar is the, the perfect guy. As an Ozzy Osbourne fanboy, I wish he was Ozzy's guitar player right now. Nothing, that, Not that I don't love Zach, but he would be... Zach feels like a really guitar player to, to me for Ozzy. He's like the go-to guy versus his guy, you know, and... uh Richie Faulkner's a monster. Andy Sneak produced that record and is playing on the tour. And Andy seems to be the perfect guy. He even has the right look for Judas Priest. I look for him to actually join the band full-time at some point. I thought it was amazing. My next one, of course, is, like we said earlier, I'm a big Seven Dust Freak. Very proud of uh, All I See Is War. thought it was a solid record, top to finish, like always. Some albums that I have on my list that are different than you all. One band that I'm really getting into, and I don't know why I like them so much, but I do, that's newer, this album may have come out in 2017 near the end. If it did, sue me. But that is Thread by Red Sun Rising. I catch myself really liking this band. I listen to my iPod on random in the vehicle, and a song come on, I'm like, oh, that's pretty kick-ass. Who is that? And very often it's Red Sun Rising. And uh, I've seen them a few times at some of the festivals and stuff. So I'm really kind of digging those guys and wanting to see where they continue to grow to and who they can become. Because I think they're really on the cusp of something slightly different than everyone else. They have, they have their own sound, I think. That one was up there for me. Another one that uh, I'm really excited about that came out this year that really held up this expectation for me was the self-titled album by Stuntable Pilots, which oh. I think is a good album to discuss. Oh, okay. Jeff Goot on lead vocals, and I think it's the comeback album of the year without question. All right. So his vocals coming into this, how did he fit in with him, you think? It's like a, like a glove. Mm -hmm. He looks the part. He... Physically on stage is real similar to, uh, to Scott Weiland. And when he was asked about that in the interview I, I was watching, and he said, you know, he said, I don't try to imitate Scott Weiland. He said, but he's my favorite artist. He said, so for me to kind of 
look and act similar to him on stage is nothing more than me just I was groomed that way because I watched him growing up and I got total respect for that you know to understand that mm-hmm. but that record's really good I saw him at Rockville and uh, he they blew the roof off the place man they were really good they're back like I fully believe that that's so and crazy. my last one that I want to mention unless you have something to say there sorry uh, no, I was just going to say it's so crazy that a lead singer passes or they go somewhere else or a guitarist, whatever. They bring somebody right in and you really don't miss a beat. Uh, you know, it's like, like you said, look at Alice in Chains. They got to William Duvall. He fits like a glove. Yeah. I, I just, it's wild. It's, it's, mind it's hard to do. But, you know, I will say, I feel like STP did miss a beat. I mean, they've been 10 years doing anything of any sure. quality, you yeah. know. Waiting on Scott and working with Scott. I was back in rehab. Scott's in favor of I mean, just so many things. I'm really happy for that band. I feel like they can move forward and have the unit again. Yeah. You know, and I think they deserve that. Another album I'm very excited about. I, a lot of people haven't taken the time to listen to this one. But the new Jakey Lee's Red Dragon Cartel album, Patina, is really, really damn good. It's more of the Badlands style of Jake. It's more of a bluesy rock than heavy. But, man, that is such a good record. And Jake's playing on it is absolutely phenomenal. If you're a guitar player or interested in that, I urge you to listen to it. He does jazz guitar on it. He plays surf at some point. And he plays. He <laughs> really shows how well-rounded he is as a guitar player. It's, it's so good. That but, like, awesome. the thing about that record is it grows on you. Like, the more you listen to it, it gets better and better. Josh, didn't they get a new lead singer also? No, Darren James Smith is still with them. Okay, they had a disagreement on the last tour, and he stepped aside while while they had other people fill in for him. Oh, okay. but he never actually left the band. Yeah, and it's cool how James so, came into that band. They just found him, I think, on like YouTube or something other. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, I think that's how it went. Jake Jake saw him and liked him and said, "Hey, let's get this guy." Well, and he's he's got he's got an actual band now. You know, the, the first record was kind of pieced together. He came in the studio, they wrote these songs and. This person sung on this song, and this one on that song, and this one played drums on this song, and that one. He's got a band now. He's got uh, Anthony Esposito on bass and Phil Verone's on drums, and they're, they're the rhythm section of those of those two with Jake is. I'm telling you, you got to listen to this record and really let it sink in to understand how good. And there's such a quality rhythm section; it really showcases what a good rhythm player Jake is, more so than just his leads. I mean, it's it's a really good record. It's just different. I want to ask you this: Why well, I got you on here? I know you're a huge Black Sabbath fan. Now, Geezer's starting another band up. I don't know if you got to hear the track that they put out or anything, but what what do you of think of this this band? Um, Dead Man Ritual, I believe is the name of the band. It's him and uh, Steve Stevens of Billy Idol and the singer from Apocalyptica and Matt Sorum from Guns N' Roses. Yep. If I'm 100% honest, I didn't care a lot for the song. I tried to listen to it about five times or six, and it just never did catch me to where I really want to keep going back and listening to it. But that said, I look forward to the, to the album because I feel like it definitely would be something I'd be interested in. So that's something to look forward to in 2019, right? Yeah, I'm anxious to see it. What about you, Kevin? Yeah, absolutely. Now, anything that those guys want to put out, I'll listen to it. Let's move on to that. The, my most anticipated albums for 2019, I mean, there, there's a whole slew of them that they're talking about. I mean, of course, they're always saying Tool, which we never know when the hell that's going to drop. Me, I believe it when I say it. it well, yeah, it. <laughs> exactly. For, for me, you both know I'm a heavy guy. I like heavy music. Slipknot. I'm very, very excited about this album to come out. Everybody's getting the big hype of it's going back to Iowa sound and stuff like that. That new track that they released was was pretty good. I mean, I'm very anxious to see this one when it comes out. What about you, Kevin? Yeah, I am too. I, I you know, Corey Taylor said that they're going back to the heavier, you know, Slipknot of old, and the new song is really good. And I think that's probably my most anticipated album of the year as well. What's you, Mr. Crum? The new song is awesome. I was definitely excited about it when I heard it. So yeah, I definitely look forward to that. Um, you know, I don't know of anything off the top of my head that comes out this year that I'm all that excited about. Maybe you guys can jog my memory on something. Another song from 2018 that I wanted to mention, another album I'm sorry real quick, was Rainy or Fog with Allison Chains. I really enjoyed that one, too. Ah, cool. Yeah. It was, it was, I thought they did a song. Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy what they're doing. 
and I read today that Jerry Contreras having back surgery soon, so hopefully he's back out there quick. Yeah, for sure. For 2019, this is just a couple of lists that I have here that I, that I see. ACDC is rumored to have a new album come out. Alter Bridge, of course, is going to be coming out with one. Uh, I'm very anxious to see Amon Amarth. I like that stuff from those guys. Anthrax is rumored. Avatar, and like Josh said earlier, Event Sevenfold, they're rumored to come out with some uh, a new album. So I'm kind of... Kind of excited to see what those guys bring out again because when they do bring an album out, I know they headline a lot of festivals and, and I get sick of seeing that because there's other bands that can do it. But when it comes to album wise, Event Sevenfold can play a fucking album out, guys. That's for sure. I like them. Chevelle. Kevin's so so. He can say it. Yeah, I'm so so on Event Sevenfold. I mean, yeah, they're fine. You know, some of their songs are good. You know, and they, and they do have a good live show. If you go see them live, they're good. But I'm just not a huge fan of them, you know, as far as album was chevelle that's a, a band i've loved for a long time i'm anxious to see what they bring out because it's been a while for them to to bring out an album uh, death angel deftones is another band so we'll see what we get from them evanescence they've been gone for a while we'll see what they bring back to the table exodus in flames king diamond kill switch engage this is for kevin i know kev likes corn a lot what, what do you think about uh, possibly a new corn album yeah i think we'll get one this year they kind of I think I read an interview where Fieldy said that they're kind of working on some stuff right now. So I think around October, November next year, we should probably see something. Josh, what about their last album that Corn came out with? You hope this is uh, you know, step up bigger than, than the last album? What do you think about it? You know, it'd be hard for me to top that last one. It might be my favorite album they've ever done. Yeah. I was really big on it. Still am. I read somewhere they're working with a lot of outside writers on this one. So I'm not so sure how that's going to pan out. But... um but I really like the last one. It'd be hard for me to talk, but I hope I, I like it better. You know, one thing you glossed over there was the new kill switch. There's actually a track or two with Howard Jones and Jesse Leach together. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. They are. And yeah, I'll that's going to be great. Forward to that. Yeah. Because I love Jesse Leach and all, but for me, it's Howard Jones all day, every day. Light the Torch. Oh, that's the 2018 album I should have mentioned. The new Light the Torch of Howard Jones. That's a killer album. I love his version of Holy Diver. I mean, I, I know that's a cover, but I think he fucking knocked it out of the ballpark when he did it with Kill It's really great. I think Ron and I'll tell you another one from 18 that keeps coming back to me. I keep trying to get Kevin to listen to this band that he wants, but Projected, which is John Connolly of Seven Dust. No, I did I listen mean, to that album. That is a good album. Yeah. Did you finally listen? What'd you think? I, I like it. I think I like it a lot. It, it has a Seven Dust feel to it. And it's a double disc, too. I like that. Mm hmm. Double I think is. when you listen to it, you realize that John's a bigger part of the writing team of Seven than people realize. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he's even yeah. mentioned that on the show before, that he's he does a lot of writing. If he's not in the studio, he's writing. Always writing, writing, writing. I, I like that double disc album he's got out. I was saying earlier, I don't like when albums are too long and stuff. That's just some of the songs suck. That projected, both of those albums are really good, but those discs are really solid. And plus, you know, like he said, those albums, he just said, let's just do a double album because it's been a very long time and I've got all these songs, so why not do a double? I think that's pretty cool. I thought. Lamb of God, there's a rumor to come out with some new stuff. Mastodon. I'm anxious about Megadeth. What, what about you guys? Of course. Yeah, I think we'll get a Megadeth album. They're going to be on the Aussie tour this summer, so I, I think we'll get some new stuff from them this year. I, I just like to say that I truly appreciate every single damn one of you all for taking time out to listen to Bod's Mayhem Hour in regards to whatever we do. Appreciate Josh and Kevin covering festivals for me because this year has been a, a whirlwind for me. Family first, as I've said that always. You guys understand that. I, I can't thank each and every single one of y'all enough just for taking some time out just to listen to, to what we do and what we bring to you. I do this out of the love of my heart for music, and I've always said this. Josh and Kevin will back me. If you can't get excited for music and it don't the chill bumps on your arms and the hair stands up on your neck, there's there's something wrong. And I hope, Chili bump. <laughs> and I hope that uh, you do find that that does that for you. But thank you guys so much. Any festivals that you guys are looking forward to this year? I mean, I haven't even put in for festivals as of yet because I just had to wait to see what I was going on. But I'm going to. I'm going well, to. Of course, you guys well, are going to be with me. We're going to see Metallica in March. That Yes, we are. Yep. Damn right we are. Mm-hmm. I should be seeing them before you guys do. I'm seeing them in January as well. Well, how about you? <laughs> yeah. Me and Kevin will be going to see Ozzy and Megadeth. How many is yep. that, Josh? 30 times now? It'll be it'll be 23. My goal is at least 25. It'll happen. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
when this tour is over, he's gonna totally do a Vegas race and say, "I'll catch him two or three times out there." What about? Oh, uh, yeah. What about what about the Max Sabbath one? What do you think about that? I know you had to watch that video. <laughs> it's funny, but I don't take it for no more than it is. Oh sure. You know, it's it's funny. I do think Zach Sabbath is kind of cool though. You know, for I me, mean, for Zach on his spare time, for him and Blasco, who's Ozzy's bass player. To want to step out and do a Black Sabbath cover band. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool, you know. He's a fan first. I, I think that about him. Josh, as always, you're always working on here to talk about Downtrend, anything you got. So how can folks stay in touch with Downtrend, keep up what you guys are doing, lay that on them? At downtrendmetal.com. Add us on Facebook, like us on Twitter, whatever. Add us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, however you want to do it. Follow us. Add us on the YouTube page that we're pretty active with. So, yeah, we're hoping to put some new material up here in the next few months for sure. And in the meantime, we're going to keep it heavy. Kevin and Josh, as always, I love you all. Thank you for what you've done for my show and for me. And folks, trust me, stick around and hang out with Bods Mayhem Hour 2019. This will be my eighth year of doing this, and I've not regretted any damn minute of this. So thank you guys so, so much for the support. If you know anybody out there that loves metal and stuff like that or horror punk punks, just, hey, give them a, let them listen to the show. If they like it, that's fine. If they don't, hey, that's fine. We're not here to please everybody. Can, and I, we're not, can I tell my favorite moment in Balls of Mayhem Hour history while I'm thinking about it? Oh, my God. It's the Hell Yo album. Quick. Well, oh, it's the same day, actually. I mean, Ood and Abel by Hell Yeah. That was a great <laughs> moment. But anyway, no. My favorite one, I was on the show with John one night. He's got a pre-recorded interview with Carmine Apiece, who was one of the most legendary drummers of all time, right? Oh, and, and John's doing this interview, and Carmine mentions Rod Stewart. Oh, God. A minute later, he again mentions Rod Stewart. And finally, John just says, Rod Stewart sucks. I don't like Rod Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> and Carmine, and I'm like, oh, my God, he just said that. Carmine's like, Rod Stewart's one of the most legendary artists of all time. I mean, John's like, that's cool, man, but I just never liked him that much. Yeah. Not realizing that Carmine played drums for Rod Stewart. No, I know he did. The heyday. I knew he did. <laughs> it's just that Rod Stewart. And he's like, man, we were the, Carmine's like, man, we were the next Rolling Stones, man. What do you mean? And John's just, you know, those guys. He's like, I just never liked that much. I'm not a big Rod Stewart fan. <laughs> that's what that was classic. But, hey. <laughs> <laughs> What you get with me, you don't get fucking fake. That's for sure. I tell you, like it if I like it or if I don't. So, you know? I just vouch for things I heard that firsthand. I mean, I, I Rod Stewart just gives me the ugh, I don't know, just ugh. <laughs> especially Kevin went and seen him this year. Oh, was that Kevin. you talked about? I actually did. No, Kevin. it was not. <laughs> Kevin, I had to take my I had to, my mom and my aunt are the biggest Rod Stewart fans ever, so I had to take my mom is too. Okay. I give you that. I give you that. My mom loves him too. It's just like Josh said. He's like, you know, we were going to be the next Rolling Stones. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I just still don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to say? I'm shocked, John. Well, I don't like, I don't like the Stones either. So there you go. <laughs> no, I'll be saying. honest with you. At that show, Cindy Lauper opened for him, and I thought she was better. Oh wow. So yeah, there you I go. Agree with that. <laughs> but hey, you know what though? It seemed like he opened up more during an interview after that. You know, he's like, okay. Probably. Yeah. So he was, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, we've had some fun times on here. That's for damn sure. Ood and Abel. I can't believe I said that fucking shit. I was like. No, another, I keep going back. I don't want to end the show. Another album that I wrote this year, you mentioned it, but I meant to comment off. Because so I want to give credit where it's due. The new Slash track, Living the Dream. They continue to put out slams and records one after another. They do. I mean, they just continue to pump them out. They're so good. Yeah, so, I'm. I'm. I'm kind of anxious to see what GNR does. Supposedly, there's rumor of them going into the studio and making a new album, but well, Richard Fortas said he was, that that was a plan. Ooh. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, we'll. I'm, yeah, I'm. I'm with you. I'm with, I'm with you, Josh. We'll see. I'm. Uh, I, I want it to be good. You know what I mean? I want it to go back to the Appetite for Destruction mm-hmm. album. I want it to be that instead of getting like uh, <laughs> Rod Stewart shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the weirdo though that think I think I to this day think Chinese democracy was awesome. Really? But whatever. I, nobody agrees with me. I loved it. Still love it. I thought yeah. I thought DJ Ashba's guitar playing on it and Bumblefoot's were phenomenal. Well a lot of that's Buckethead too. Yeah, yeah, that is record. right. That is right. Buckethead's on that album. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> where's that dude at now? God, I don't know. I have not heard anything on him. Have you ever heard the time he went to write songs with Ozzy Osbourne? I I did not. No. They sent him to Ozzy's house to write. And Ozzy said, 
to hear Ozzy tell the story is obviously ten times better because it was actually. But he said he showed up actually wearing a mask and the bucket on his head. Oh my god! <laughs> and Ozzy's like, "What the fuck?" And then Ozzy's like, "Man, you know, you don't have to wear that, dude." Like, I'm gonna go in here and get us something to drink. You can just take your mask off. Like, you don't have to wear that, dude. We're cool. And Ozzy said he goes to the kitchen and comes back and he had a different mask on. <laughs> 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 you know, good. You can just go ahead and fucking go. Like, you're fine. And he's seen him home. And he's seen him out the door. Maybe he didn't so want to That's how the writing section went. It lasted like 20 minutes. Thanks, guys, for what you do for the show. I tremendously appreciate it. And, folks, stick around. We're going to have some good stuff coming up for 2019. Please get out and like us on our Facebook page. We have our podcast link plus our YouTube link on the Bods Mayhem Hour Facebook page. Stick around, folks, for 2019. And thanks, Kevin and Josh, for everything you do for the show, man. I appreciate you. Thank you, John. Yeah, thanks, y'all. Appreciate it, man. (laughs) 